Hello guys, welcome back to Dev Vlogs. Uh, we are meeting after a long time. In this video, we are going to see how we are going to improve the performance of Udo. We can use workers, we can use nginx, pg bouncer, postgres tuning and that is one advanced thing that can be done in postgres. So the first thing is workers. So workers is basically like splitting the request into multiple threads and uh, storing giving it back to the database. The, the basic thing is you should know the number of process or the cores in the server that you are hosting. So basically number of cores into 2 plus 1 that is the thumb rule over for creating the workers. If you are having 4 cores it is 4 into 2 plus 1 that is 9 workers you can add up. The next thing is nginx. So this is just the uh, proxy server that handles the request. So basically the, all the requests will be sent to nginx and it will be doing the load balancing for your server. You can run two instances of the same add-ons so that it runs in two different ports and the load balancing is done by the nginx. So this is another way and the next is pg bouncer. So pg bouncer is similar to nginx and uh, the difference is the nginx is for handling web requests and pg bouncer is basically to handle the postgres request that is sent from the udo server so you can have multiple clients requesting the uh, same db or uh, you know the same connection it, it will handle the request that is sent to the server so basically it won't uh, pile up the number of connections that is open so you can use this to handle the uh, load on the postgres server Apart from this, I will show you how to set up the Postgres. So let's get started. So first we are going to see workers. If you use the Udo site, there is an article for deploying Udo. In that I have mentioned the uh, sample of the workers, how it, will, how it should be configured. So this is the calculation that I have set. It is number of CPUs into 2 plus 1. So uh, count workers need 1 CPU. So the number of workers is one. If, it, if the workers is set as one, the number of uh, concurrent users that can use Udo is six. So also you can uh, change the memory, memory configuration, etc. So if you visit this site, uh, there is this. You can find this article. I'll just put put the article link in my video description also. So how we should configure us? So by default it is set to 0 and you can set it as 1. Now we can see two workers running for HTTP and two for cron. So next we will see how to configure nginx for Udo. So in the same deployment page, you can find the instructions about how to configure nginx for Udo. So first you have to in install nginx. So now you can see the Nginx is running. So the next step would be enabling proxy mode in Udo. Change it to true. And the next thing would be You can find the default configuration for uh, configuring an nginx with Udo. For this, I'm going to use the one that is provided in the Udo website itself. So 
So next I have to create the corner file. And if you could see there is a server a CRT and server key, so we have to create an SSH key. So it will ask for the country code from in India, so I am TM. So now the key is configured and next we have to modify the uh, host file so the URL that we have given for orders to do so we have to add this to our host file One will be for Udo, and the next there is one called Udo chat for long pool. So now we have to uh, restart the server for the index. And now, if you reset HTTPS colon slash edit, so it will be pop up, popped up with this message. We will go to advanced and exception. So now we can see that the Udo is running from HTTPS Udo, so we can access. Now you can see Udo is running on uh, port 80. Next, we will see how to configure Postgres for performance improvements. So the first one we are going to see is uh, PG Bouncer. So first we have to install PG Bouncer. So it's installed. So now we have to open the PG Bouncer INI file. So you can see the uh, structure that has been followed here. I will just show you a simple configuration that can be done. So what this means is you can actually connect all the databases via PG Bouncer. So PG Bouncer uh, by default runs on uh, 6432 port. You can see it over here. So default listen address is uh, the local host address and the listen listening port will be 6432.
so the next thing that is to be configured is the user list you can find it in uh, in this path so next we have to restart the uh, pg bouncer server So now if you access it via PG admin, you should be able to connect to the server. Now you can see you have connected uh, to the Postgres server via PG Bouncer. So next we have to configure uh, Udo. Change this to six four three two. So now we can see that it is working via PG Bouncer. So next, let's jump directly into Postgres configurations. So we have to set the DB max connections as 100 in Udo and uh, this log rate equal to, which means it will create a new log file every day and archiving the existing file. And this will have a significant amount of uh, performance improvement and we are going to configure the same for Postgres also. We are setting the max connection as 100 uh, connections. And uh, we are assuming here that we have 8 GB of RAM in the server. And we are going to allocate 4 GB for Postgres. So in that case, we are allocating 1 GB for uh, 1 GB of RAM for shared memory and the rest for caching. And you can configure the rest of the things based on the availability of uh, the RAM so if we have like 16 gb of ram so 50 percent would be 8 so this will be 2 gb and this will be 6 gb so based on that you can uh, uh, get more memory and that will improve the uh, performance of postgres also it is better to use ssd based hard drives so next would be modifying the uh, Postgres config file itself. The final improvement that we can do in Postgres is turning off the auto vacuum so what auto vacuum is it is basically what your windows de windows defragmentation does so it will be rearranging the uh, tables in the disk uh, in the disk so that it can access it faster so turning off this means uh, it will actually have a significant improvement on the overall speed what will happen is uh, if a particular table it's an uh, it's a uh, for say if you hit thousand or ten thousand records this auto vacuum automatically starts running so what happens is uh, in case if it is running in the same time as the users are accessing the server it will be very slow as it will have an overhead if you turn off the settings there will be a significant performance improvement but the downside for this is if the auto vacuum is not done if the db reaches a particular size it will auto shut down which means you won't be able to access the db it will the db will go into fail safe mode and it will try to prevent the data loss the plus side for this is you will see a lot of improvements in the speed the downside is it might shut down so uh, the way out would be we have to run the auto vacuum 
when the time the user doesn't access the system so that there is no uh, issue for the user while accessing it so in order to turn off auto vacuum I have to open the postgres config file So by default, in the config file, it will show it as it is turned off. But if you go to the DB and run the uh, query that is available in the uh, Postgres doc, you will see the auto vacuum is always turned on. So if you turn it off here, so if you turn it off here, it will be affected in all the DBs. So once the auto vacuum is turned off, you have to restart the Postgres server. So before turning it off, just be careful know what you're doing so if you are not running the auto vacuum for like a day or two based on the data and the number of records that are inserted every day there is a chance of your db getting locked out so uh, it is highly recommended if you turn off make sure you run the um, auto vacuum manually and you can find the query for running the auto, man, auto vacuum manually in the Postgres documentation uh, document itself. So this is the final way of improving it. If you like this video, please do like, share and comment. And don't forget to subscribe. Wish you all a happy Christmas and a new year. Thank you.